the lawns of the Meridian Hotel at Minas Yahi provided an ideal location for paddlers to prepare themselves for the challenge ahead. The race would be very fast, there's a lot of good guys here and there's a, a lot of good guys that have really good parts or aspects in that race so uh, you know while some of the older guys I guess are better downwind, the, the main part of the race is going to be into the wind and throwing in those fen hot spots definitely adds a, um, a, another, another dimension to the event. Itching to get out there and get going and uh, yeah just uh, get into the race. It's a lot of anticipation on the line here right now. I think everyone wants to get in there and have a crack. Yeah, it's good. Everyone's keen to get on the water and, I don't know, get over the hype and get into the real business end of it, so it should be good. Yeah, there's a lot of people here and there's a lot of excitement. I think um, I think maybe the prize pool and everyone's, yeah, you can definitely feel the pressure. You can tell something's coming up. Oh, the atmosphere is it's both loud with the power boats and actually tense and exciting. I think everyone wants to see who's going to win it because there's just absolutely no one that you can predict with any certainty. There's about five guys that can win that are likely to win and then about another five guys that just as easily could win and the ten of those guys or twelve will be basically just shredding each other to pieces. I think from a spectator point it's an amazing race to observe and be part of. As a participant it's exciting to be on the line with these guys. This is a real deal field and perhaps arguably the greatest field ever assembled in a single race, so that's, that's cool to be part of. American paddler Joe Glickman sums it up perfectly. This is the greatest field of paddlers ever assembled together in a single race. The cream of the world's elite ocean paddlers have all gathered in Dubai to take on the challenge of this 18 kilometer out and back course. The top Australians, South Africans, Tahitians, New Zealanders, all lining up side by side to thrash it out all looking to claim the title as champion and claim the enormous first place prize here at the Dubai Shamal. Before the race got underway, all the paddlers had to paddle out to the start line on the edge of the impressive Palm Island structure, three kilometers from Barasti Beach. From the edge of the Palm, the paddlers would head eight kilometers directly out to sea, passing through the three Fen hotspot boys turn and paddle back downwind to the finish back on Barusti Beach at Minasiyaki. This impressive procession of over 100 boats was well received by the thousands of spectators packed onto the Class 1 powerboat grandstand. And with the magnificent skyline, the seven-star Burj Al Arab and the million-dollar boats cruising past, some of the competitors would have been forgiven for being a bit overwhelmed. At the start gun, it was a flurry of paddles as the boats quickly made their way out of the calm, protected waters of the Palm Island and straight into the massive swell that was rolling in off the Iranian Sea. Let's go on board with Wayne Randall. These shots will give you a good idea of the size of the swell paddlers had to contend with. Just 400 meters into the race and all of the top paddlers are bunched together except for Hank McGregor who has pushed ahead to take the cash bonus at the first of three Fen hotspots just ahead of the in-form Australian Tim Jacobs and South Africa's Daryl Bartho. These hotspots on the upwind leg are added race incentives and ensure the racing remains red hot at all times. A powerful chasing pack following McGregor with both Chalupski brothers working hard against the ocean but still no sign of David Mocker, who apparently was last off the start line because he was helping Kenny Wallace make a makeshift bung and was facing in the opposite direction when the gun went off. A dreadful start for the South African charger. Back at the front and big Kenny Wallace has joined fellow Australian Tim Jacobs on the front pack. At the second Fen hotspot and Tim Jacobs is out front Oh, but McGregor comes storming up the inside to snatch the second cash bonus. Let's hear from the man himself. Yeah, look, um, the first hot spot I got, and then uh, the second one I sort of paced myself. Tim Jacobs came up and uh, sat on his wave, and I waited till about 80 meters to go, and uh, he was pushing me right, and I suddenly realized that we weren't going to make the can at the, at the angle that we were traveling. So um, I suddenly put the hammers down and, and went round him. And uh, yeah, we had like 30 meters to go and it was like neck and neck. And uh, I just managed to come past him and just got, got the second hot spot. And uh, yeah, it was pretty much after that we put paddles down and just relaxed, sat on the wave all the way out uh, for the next sort of six k's. 
and uh, about 400 meters to go before we got to the halfway mark. A couple of guys had fallen off, the pace was still quite hard and um, I sort of pulled wide and just like sort of picked up picked up the pace a bit and uh, managed to get back in the front and I uh, took the, the last hot spot on the turn, turn first and I think uh, the sort of spread the field a little bit there, the, the bunch was quite close but I sort of spread a couple of guys out and then it was just uh, everyone for themselves on the way home. As the rest of the elite men make their way around the top turn boy, we see New Zealander Katie Pocock in boat 63, preparing herself for the downward dash way out in front in the women's race. Late entry into the race, Abby Miedema doing exceptionally well a few minutes back in second. Back with the men and what an unbelievable comeback from David Mocha. From last place off the start line, he has pulled himself through the entire field to rejoin leaders Hank McGregor and Tim Jacobs at the front. This man is on form and on a serious mission. David and Hank have their foot flat on the gas, leaving Tim Jacobs floundering in their wake. These two South Africans know exactly what the other is capable of and realize that this is one victory that they are going to have to earn the hard way. Downwind guru Oscar Chilovsky is just destroying these perfect downwind runs. Amazing to watch. Coming around the Palm Island breakwater and David manages to pick up one or two runs from a passing cruise liner and opens up a 30 meter lead coming into the final kilometer. You can see by David's face that he has pushed himself to the limit. A world-class effort from a world-class ocean paddler. Hank McGregor puts on a brave face, but he must be bitterly disappointed to have come so close. Tim Jacobs maintains his third place on the downwind leg with the Chalupski brothers, Oscar and Herman, dicing the last few meters for fourth and fifth. Herman proving just too strong at the death. Katie Pocock takes an emphatic victory in the women's section over Abby Miedema. South Africans Natalie Bergranges and Michelle Eder round out the top four. Taking a quick look at the leaderboard and we see the South Africans dominating proceedings claiming seven of the top ten places in the men's race. New Zealander Katie Pocock showing that she is in a class of her own almost ten minutes clear of second.